uh, the thing is that uh, uh, macrobiotics, what I do, is basically going into cleaning the blood structure up. So whatever you eat, your blood comes out of it, right? So uh, we, I mean, the broad template of macrobiotics goes into cleaning up the nadi system, which is in the Chinese medicine system called the meridians, which are attached to the chakra system in the body. So therefore the chakras spin more efficiently. Uh, and your nadis and your pathways, so to say, the meridian lines are kept clean. And therefore there's a spiritual implication to the diet as well. It, st it actually starts there. So uh, barring the fact that macrobiotics bring, brings these two polarities, yin and yang, and achieving balance between the two, it also goes down to how we came into being, you know, uh, what is heaven's force, what is earth's force, what are men made of, what kind of forces govern men, what kind of forces govern women, and therefore living with balance. Uh, the other aspect of it takes you down to if you live with balance then you and you're including foods that ca keep you calm and keep your mind condition calm and clean up the, your energy and eat enriched food with prana as Indians call it then obviously you're vibrating at a higher frequency there is the spiritual implication of the diet okay now the why I thought of the subject of love I said see it's just not about love between man and a woman it all starts with self-love and then it, it should go surpassing man and woman it should go to compassionate love right and what was happening last year with the you know the whole rape scene in this country and the mindsets of what I was seeing with people uh, you know uh, Michio Kushi the the person who got this diet together after George Osawa in the West talks about one peaceful world and that's the concept I wanted to build on in in the book the love diet so it's not just about man woman love sure there it's in there but it's more about you know what is it that guides you so the, it's really actually my journey through it you know about uh, I've seen my life through various stages and I've gone through this process of hating myself loving myself uh, I do Vipassana meditation, so I've understood the concept of negativity. And Goyanka ji keeps talking about being free from negativity. So it borders down to the same thing. You know, it's like, okay, I can be free from negativity in my head, but if I'm eating sugar and I'm eating things which are junking me up, is that going to really help? Because eventually I'll be doing my one-hour meditation, but flying off the handle somewhere else. So I sort of looked at the book as bridging the gap and talking to the reader about Listen, there is a way to get to this concept. It's not just a thing in the head and it's not just something that needs to be intellectualized. You can actually alter your foods, live a free life with the way you're living and live in a state of love 24 seven. So it borders on, so they're in the spiritual aspects of the book. So the book talks a lot about how I diagnose, you know, with the chakra system, I use my uh, diagnostic tools from the traditional Chinese medicine perspective and uh, then we bring it all together because we're looking at a person holistically. You know, if a person walks in with, let's say, cancer of the breast, there's an emotional component and there's a physical component. There are both those components at play. And what are the stages of perhaps, she didn't, she didn't go through the stages of self-love creating that condition for her and physically her dad didn't support her either so she landed up in that state and that's what most ailments are all about actually there's a physical and an emotional component to it so therefore that drove me to wrote the, write the book then because I have a research background I actually went in and researched it's one chapter is dedicated to live research with all kinds of people married single you know divorced uh, gay, lesbian, you know, single and looking, single and not looking. I looked at all those categories and came up with what they thought about, you know, what is this love, you know? I mean, is it just a thing because it exists or is it actually out there? Or And not just man-woman love, like what is it that makes them tick with love? And that was interesting because that threw up a lot of stuff. And eventually I uh, had this... Uh, hypotheses which was already in place that look it took me a lot of 
bad eating habits, going through the stages of negativity to get to a stage of self-love and then get to a stage of generating love in my life. And therefore also being in a stage of love towards everything and everyone around me. How did I get there? So this is my story. This is what I think it should be all about. This is how my diagnostic tools have helped me to get there. And I can help you if I've helped myself. And I'm helping so many others. So essentially the book is about that. So it's not just a, you know, it's just not just the perfect formula for man-woman chemistry or, you know, I mean, sure, there's enough of that in there too. But it's also about, well, how do I eventually live with myself and with others on a daily basis? It could be your staff, it could be your dogs, it could be you know, a person who you meet every day but don't even notice, like your could be your banker. But are you in a state of love towards everybody? Are you vibrating at that frequency where, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I, I, can't, I don't say I'm there completely yet, but I think I do that 80% of the time. So I think that's great. You know, and if, uh, if you can be in that state with the foods that you eat, with the lifestyle that you live, why not? So essentially the book is about that.